Hi everyone, my name is Mitchell Burrows. As you might have guessed, I've loved movies from a young age and I've been discussing that in my videos so far. But for this video, I thought I'd do something different. Instead of talking about what I've learned from watching other people's movies, today I'm going to talk about what I've learned from the process of making my own. I first started making very short shorts on my iPod in year 6, and then spent a lot of my early secondary school years progressing and progressing. I'm using the word progressing very loosely here. I took a break for a while due to school life etc taken over, but returned to making shorts at the back end of 2019. Since then I've made a few ads of which you can find some of in the playlist link below or by visiting my Instagram, but I'm not going to talk about them now because today we're talking purely narrative videos, ones where I tell a story. I just think it will be fun to look back on videos which I mostly made before I knew a fraction of what I know about movies now, and see if there's anything of note I can pull out of them. Please note, <laughs> it's mainly going to be bad stuff. While I made quite a few videos before this one, I'm going to start with 2014's The Biohazard because, well, it's the first one that doesn't look like this. After a zombie apocalypse breaks out, Survivor Todd finds two members of a nearby camp called Rookie and Ant, who agree to take him back to their group once they've gathered supplies. Ant betrays them after a minute and 40 seconds of screen time, before they return to camp to find it's been abandoned, and Rookie is bitten and then shot before he can turn into a zombie. It's emotional stuff, let me tell you. Todd, you have to kill me now. I can't shoot you, Rookie. You have to, before I get your ability to respawn. So the biohazard is special because I think you can literally see every technical flaw with my earlier videos right here. I tried and failed to edit around the fact that the camera cuts out before people finish their lines by basically cutting them off mid-sentence. I'll outlive you all. The only thing stopping me from that is- <laughs> People look right down the lens of the camera. And many, many more, but I won't cover that now, otherwise I'd be talking about this one all day. And believe me, I don't want to look at this for any longer than I have to. It's already painful enough that I thought it would be necessary to show this part twice. The walkers are everywhere. The walkers are everywhere. And before you ask, yeah, the characters are using Nerf guns. Why? Listen to this completely scientific and necessary explanation. We put explosive pellets in the Nerf dots so they're as effective and strong as normal bullets. I bet you feel stupid now, don't you? One thing I didn't expect is that there's actually one thing I kinda like about this one. The camera work is shaky and as awkward as anything, but in this scene I tried moving the camera from subject to subject in one take, and I mean, at least that's something. Overall, this is everything you expect from a 12 year old making a short film, and at the very least, I appreciate this one for the memory. Batman's son, Damien, approaches Superman's son, Jason, who are both English for some reason, because Superman has imprisoned Batman, leading to the two having a fight that Jason wins. Damien searches his dad's supplies and finds Scarecrow's fear gas, which makes him hallucinate Joker, played by a rather attractive young man, who convinces him to shoot Jason, to be continued. This is easily the most embarrassing out of all of the short films in this video. Everyone's a year older except the filmmaking has gone backwards. At least with the biohazard, if I was looking for something to praise I could find it, whereas this whole thing is pretty irredeemable, maybe apart from the shot inside a drawer. There's no especially bad editing in this one, but don't worry, I made up for that by making sure the camera was never in focus, and these poor guys. None of them wanted to be here just spouting these terrible lines about Batman and Superman. And because I'm not one of those boring newsreaders that have a stick shoved up their ass, I'm going to tell you what I think. It's bullshit. Another problem with a lot of these, the audio. Still to this day I hate and struggle with audio editing, but I mean, this is a crime, like tenet levels of quiet dialogue. Whereas with the biohazard I can appreciate it considering my age and lack of equipment, with this one I just can't. Biohazard just has some kind of charm to it, for me anyway, but I just don't get any enjoyment out of revisiting this video, I don't even remember being happy with it when I made it, just 0 out of 10. Here's where things start getting a bit more tolerable. Hitmen starts with a standoff between three people and individually flashes back to each of their stories to gradually reveal that this guy set up this guy by telling him to kill this guy but giving this guy a blank bullets so that this guy could kill him. 
Yeah, in terms of story and writing, I don't hate this one. There's a little twist in there, some non-chronological storytelling. I like the concept of the editing whenever we start a new chapter. This guy owes me 500 quid. It's just a lot more easier to swallow. The cinematography isn't anything amazing, but at least you can actually see people this time, apart from this shot. Which, to be fair, no one wants to see that haircut in focus. Basically all of the problems with this one come from it being a bunch of 14, 15 year olds being, well, 14 and 15 year olds. There's a lot of shots where people are trying not to laugh, shots where people in the background couldn't care less about what was going on. All random noises like screaming or shouting in the background coming from everyone who wasn't in the shot just having a jolly old time. Yeah, it's not perfect. It's still a bit cringy, but like the Biohazard, I can appreciate this one. There are actually things I like about it. I think the story progresses in quite a fun way considering what it is. It's just a bit of a step in the right direction. Here it is, my most recent, my longest, the only short film that's still available to watch on this channel. Tyler Watts is thrown into a pit of depression and a race against time after he finds out a figure from his family's past has returned and taken his brother for ransom. That's all I'm going to reveal for now because for once I'm actually going to say if you haven't seen this I'd appreciate if you gave it a watch. I'm reasonably happy with this one, who would have thought? The part of the film I'm easily the happiest with is the writing. Even watching it now I'm pretty happy with how the story progresses with every scene revealing some new information about character or plot. There are lines that are repeated with new context to drive the plot or with slight differences to show character development. It's nothing mind blowing but for the scale and length of the story I'm glad I included touches like this however little they are. In terms of directing, there are things I'm proud of, but if there's one thing I regret, it's not taking my time more. See, we made this while in school, and when we weren't in school, we all had different work schedules to work around, so basically every time we filmed, we were on a time limit, and I think you can tell watching the film. You can see the cameraman's shadow, there are emotional moments that are hard to hear in parts because I didn't have time to re-record it to get louder dialogue. There are shots that didn't clearly convey what I wanted to, especially this one, where the detective imagines Tyler with the gun, the way it's filmed just doesn't make it at all feel like an imagination sequence, more like something that's actually taken place. Just loads of little mistakes that weren't caught on the day because I was too eager to get onto the next shot rather than making sure that what we got was as good as it could be. But you know what, I'm still proud of this and I'm definitely glad I made it. That's the point with this video I guess, no matter your age or lack of equipment, if you have that urge to go out and make stuff, just do it. Are you going to like everything you make? Speaking from experience, not at all. But with every video I've made, I've learned something from it and it's always good to look back and see how you've progressed. For Ransom only came out just over a year ago and I already feel like I could do a much better job of it now. So it's only up from where you currently are. So there you have it I guess. Give the video a like if you enjoyed seeing me torture myself with these earlier videos and leave a comment down below. Let me know if you've had any experience making stuff. Be sure to subscribe to hear me talk about movies and I'll see you soon.